Hey, everybody. Welcome to the 100th episode of the Harland Highway podcast. And so excited to have you here. Thanks for being part of it. And catch me in Salt Lake City, Utah at Wise Guys uh, this March 29th and 30th. Get tickets at harlandwilliams.com. And then look out, Toronto. Daddy's coming home. Uh, That's right. I'm going to be back in my hometown of Toronto, Ontario. That's where it all started for me, doing stand-up at the Royal Theatre, April 12th, 7 p.m. show and 10 p.m. show. So cool to be coming back where it all started for me. So the Royal Theatre, uh, April 12th, 7 and 10 p.m., one night only. Uh, get your tickets, gang. They're going fast um, and want you to come out and have some laughs. So uh, see you there. And please enjoy the 100th episode of the Harland Highway podcast with one of our favorite funny guests, Kevin Nealon from Saturday Night Live. Uh, here we go. Well, are you picking something? There's a little uh, wound. Oh, you're bleeding. bleeding yeah. Do you want a tampon? Uh, I already have one of those on. I need something for this. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. With Matt LeBlanc and no. a year and a half to get him. And then what? I'm going and I have my GoPro on um, time lapse. Come so on. So I didn't even video 10 minutes I had of it. Oh no! And he would he do it again? He never knew because I, I doctored it. I put like paparazzi pictures and stuff, and drone shots. You know, use ten minutes of Matt LeBlanc, and wow. So you're not really a tech guy then. I'm becoming a tech guy. I think you need to be a tech guy or gal in this world. You're nowadays. thinking of becoming a gal? A tech gal. Like a trans tech? No, but technically a gal. You want to technically become technically, a gal? Technically, I'll become a gal. No way. Well, there is a way. How? Technically? Yeah. Um, you have a guy come up, IT guy. And turn you into a gal? Well, technically, yeah. What about turning into Gal Gadot? Would you do that? Ooh. Ooh. I'd probably date myself if I got turned into Gal Gadot. Like, if I was going to transition, I think I'd become a Gal Gadot. I don't... Tell me about this Gal Gadot. Well, she was Wonder Woman. Really? Yeah, and she wears... What's interesting, she wears a Wonder Bra. That is so coincidental. It's like it's a weird, like one of those serendipitous flukes. Well, are you picking something? There's a little uh, wound. Oh, you're bleeding. bleeding. Yeah. Do you want a tampon? Uh, I already have one of those on. I need something for this. Amber, Kevin's Medic. bleeding. Medic. This is the first first <laughs> podcast where someone's been bleeding it sure, it sure within is. the first five minutes. Let what? me go get. No, no, this is an old wound. I know, but it's oh, it's fresh. As soon as you started talking about transitioning into a girl, your arm got a period. I said a gal. Oh, oh, I need. A, I'm gonna get a thank you. Get Start band-aids? with that. I'm going to get a Band-Aid. Doesn't Amber know where the Band-Aids are? Can you? She doesn't. Can you hold down a podcast sure. while you're bleeding? Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know how to do this. Of course. Because you're a tech guy. I'm gal. a tech guy. You're a tech gal. Can you hold <laughs> that up to the camera and show them your menstrual cycle? Wow. Okay, stay. Oh, wait. I'm going to show you better. Wow. You got big <laughs> pipes for a gal. Those are guns. Really? Yeah. Are they registered? This one is, but it's a Python. Wow. Technically. All right, I don't need a Band-Aid. That's fine. No, you do. Hang on. Can you hold down the podcast without me? Because we really haven't even... I haven't even done the theme song yet. Oh, well, then I don't need to do anything. Go get your Band-Aid. But it's technically... We've started. Okay. All right. Hold it down. Be right back. Give me about three hours. (laughs) You don't know where this studio is, but it's a beautiful view. Uh, You look outside and you see the entire basin of Los Angeles. I'm pretty sure it's a basin. I don't even know what how you would describe or if that is a basin. Basin is usually something you wash clothes in. 
from where I'm from. And, um, but I'm excited to be here. Harlan is probably one of the greatest podcast hosts out of the zillions that asked me to do their podcast. This is probably one of the only ones that I do. And in fact, I've made a, this is a, um, a promise to myself, no more podcasts after this one. And I made that rule before I did this today, but I already had this one scheduled because Harlan uh, likes, likes me, I guess, because this is my 20th time back. All right, he's giving me a signal to wrap it up. Anyway, um, Harlan's coming back now. And hey, what were you talking about? Give me a Band-Aid, man. I'm going to bleed to death here. I have two. All right. I'll save one for later. Yeah. Unless you want to join me. What? Bleeding? Yeah. Hmm. Are you good with um, medical stuff? Like if you came upon a car accident. Yeah. That say you created. Yeah. And the other person is bleeding profusively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would, would you know what to do? Profusively or profusely? Prof- profusively. What I said. So I'm rolling up on an English major who's been in an accident. Yeah. Isn't it profusely? No. So it's profusively. Let me ask you something. Are you going to be correcting me the whole podcast? Probably. All right. Because I feel like there's a lot more where this came from. You know, there's, uh, there's a myriad things where this came from. Myriad? Myriad, myriad on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Hey, is it myriad, myriad or is it mirror? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Um, to answer your question, yes, I am trained in uh, St. John's Ambulance uh, Medical uh, Certificate. Are you really? Yeah. So ah! I... You do that when you pull it off, not put ah! it on. Oh, okay, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> backwards, backwards much? All right. Um, yeah, so I had to take some... Uh, I had to get my certificate. Is for, that true? Yeah. So right, I do what, know... Did you want to become an EMT? No, but I, I, ran, a, uh, I ran a camp when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I had to get it as part of my job requirement. Okay. And so I did learn all about, um, you know, lacerations, cuts, the Heimlich maneuver. Oh, you can do the Heimlich? Mouth to mouth. Oh, I do it a lot. How about the mouth to mouth? You do that? I do that a lot. Yeah, when I'm making is out. It, is it just mouth to mouth or are there other body parts you could do mouth to? You can do mouth to anus, but it's, I don't know. Most people. Does it work? It does. It does work. <laughs> It does work, but most people don't put mouthwash in the right area, you know? You ever do anus to mouth? <laughs> well, it's the same thing. You just have to turn up around. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's called the Cirque du Soleil. Because usually you would be on the receiving end. Yeah. That way. But yeah, you have to do mouth to mouth. And the Heim, have you ever done the Heimlich? I almost did it the other night. I was at the ice house, and some guy in the front row apparently what? was choking. What? And I jumped off the stage. And I was about to give him the Heimlich because someone in the audience says, hey, she's choking, he's choking. And he was like, oh. oh, oh. And uh, so I was about to start, you know, pushing up. And I was yeah. people hold him up. And uh, finally he came around. And, and the lady in the back is yelling, push on his belly button. Push it. I said, that's not a button. You don't yeah. push the button. Yeah. You know. So anyway, I knew how to do it. I've never done it before, but I've seen it done twice. And it's pretty violent. Yeah, you have to you have to like ball up your fist, and it, almost and lift the person. You have to like ground. wrench it right on, right under the rib cage, the rib cage right there, yeah. and boom. Yeah, and then uh, so I I start I'm about to do it, and he comes around and he's okay. They lead him off <sighs> into the green room. Come to find out, he's got stage four stomach cancer, and that was a result of the medicine he was taking. Wow. So can you imagine if I started doing the Heimlich on his cancerous stomach? Isn't it sad when theater people get cancer? Stage four. God. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? I liked that little. What happened, Nook? Here's what, here's what happened, kind of a. You said uh, stage four cancer? What do you mean? What? Well. <laughs> I said, what? It's not. Well. Uh, yeah, stage four cancer. Stage four is. Uh, oh. Really cancer you get, yeah, from, I uh, thought it was actors, like, like Broadway people. When Broadway got cancer, stage. Okay. No. Wow. Hey, folks, today's show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Yes, indeed. What's the first thing you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Read a book, go jogging, uh, build a model airplane? I don't know. A lot of us spend our time wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? 
If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and how to make it a priority. Now, therapy can help you find out what matters to you so you can do more of it. I don't know if you've ever done therapy or not, but a lot of people use it to deal with emotional turmoil, uh, extra baggage, feelings, emotions, things that maybe feel a little out of their control or they don't know how to cope with. It can be a very powerful tool. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash highway today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash highway. Start getting help. Better help. That's all they are right in the name. Better help. Now, back to the show. Uh, I did, I have mixed feelings about the Heimlich because I had kind of, uh, you know, for they say for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. So I was at a seafood restaurant where they served other things, you know, different types of seafood, fish and lobster and all this. So some guy was choking on a shrimp, big fat guy. And everyone was standing up. It was a big spectacle. I get behind the guy. I'm doing the Heimlich. And as you said, it's violent. Um, people are screaming. There's this lady right across screaming. She's like, ah, I'm choking too. Right? I <laughs> pop it. The shrimp flies out, goes into her mouth while she's screaming. She's allergic to shrimp. Is she choking on it? No. She has an allergic reaction. I saved fatty, and the lady died from a, a, a shrimp allergy. Oh, boy. So I saved one and killed another. Um. Sometimes you got to make sure in the, in the kitchens of a lot of restaurants, they have the instructions on how to give the Heimlich maneuver. Yeah. Restaurants too. Where I worked, they, they had instructions on how to lift a box properly. And I wow. thought it was the Heimlich maneuver instructions. Well, that's when a woman gets uh, something caught in her vagina. When you got to lift the box. <laughs> <laughs> you take things so literally. I know, but you're your bleeding. Whole... And I feel like you're lightheaded. And are you okay? Have you yeah. stopped the... The bleeding has stopped. Okay. The, the pulsating has not. Do you know one time... You uh, got a minute? Uh, one wait, time... Hold on, hold on. If you're going to ask me that, let me at least... One minute. Well, can you do it in 40 seconds? Yeah, man. Great, go for it. I want to share a very brief story with you for the next 45 minutes. Great, okay. Uh, one time I was walking in flip-flops. Oh, I had a God. house by the beach, and I was, had some brick stairs that had an edge on them. And I caught the top of the flip flop, and I cut my f- toe on the edge of that brick. <sighs> it did you know there's an artery like under your t- big toe around there? It was spurting blood out like that under the nail. No, on the bottom of the toe. Oh, on the bottom. Yep. And I I wrapped a cloth around it. I there was a, a guy, my contractor, who used to be an EMT. Oh yeah. He came over and looked at. It, he goes, oh, 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 it was grossing him out. He goes, you better go to the uh, walk in the ER. So I drive over there, wrap it up, and I drive over there. I don't know who it was, but they put salt on it. I almost hit the ceiling. It's like they were stabbing a knife into my bone. And finally, I went over to the emergency emergency room. Yeah. I've been there ever since. You've what? I've been there ever since. At the emergency room? At the emergency room. Well, I don't blame you. They got great beds. Oh, but the service is so slow. The the service is slow. Food's not, but... I don't blame you. The shrimp is amazing. Oh, if you can keep it in your mouth. Yeah. I thought you said this was a forty-five minute story. It is. I'm taking my my. my oh, you're beats. taking a break. Okay. I'm taking my beats. That's t- comedy radio. That's timing. What about some celery? <laughs> you're gonna take beats. You might. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> What am I going to do with you? <laughs> what am I going to do with you? 
yeah. So um, okay, I don't like to go to ERs. Of course, who does? But, but can I, I go ahead? No, I was going to ask no, because go ahead. Go ahead. I've never had a guest bleed on the podcast before. Annually so, or annually or annually? No, I haven't had anyone bleed. Period. Well, that doesn't make that's an oxymoron. Bleed. You can't say bleed. Period. My friend Be- Dave uh, used to, in open mic night when he first started. He would, Who's Mike? No, it's open oh, mic. Oh, that's going to be a bleeding anus if you yeah. open mic. So he says, uh, is it just me or is everyone coughing up blood this morning? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. That was but, a good joke. Well, can we, can we ask how you, like, no one's ever bled. You come in bleeding. Can I ask how you did that? Where'd you go? Where'd oh, you, there you are. Yeah, that sometimes I get blocked. Well, that up. was an old scab. But from what? Good question. See? This is why it, it's been there for a while. It was a little infected. I cut it on a bathroom door. <clears throat> the handle. What? That goes into the bathroom. I just kind of caught it on there. Oh, I'm wow. Trying, the, 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 the bathroom where I was slips my mind. Huh. I'm trying to remember where it was. But it doesn't matter. It just didn't look like it was a very clean bathroom. And everybody's touching the handle. Mm. Yeah. So, so it, it got, got infected. I think it got a little infected, not that bad. But the scab was there for a while, and then as I sat down here, I was so nervous, I was picking at it, mm. and it it just flaked off, and then the blood started rushing out. You know, someone else spent some time in a bathroom that wasn't so clean, and I don't know if you remember, um, George Michael. Is that who you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it possible you were at the? Infamous no. George Michael bathroom. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I'm just asking. No, it was. Um, well, I think we I think it might have been. Would you want to say you were at the I'm George sorry, Michael I'm bathroom? Sorry. What were we talking about? You were at the George Michael bathroom and yeah. you cut yourself open. Yeah, it was not. <clears throat> it was not a, a pleasant sight. Yeah. Well, should we? I think we should start the podcast Let's now that we're up. through your health Let's concerns. Start it up. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Well, now that's a right, ladies and gentlemen. You on the Holly Highway podcast, and uh, it's the return of probably my favorite guest, uh, Kevin Nealon. And I was gonna say your middle name, but I know you don't like that. Unless no, you I want like me it. to. <clears throat> sure, go ahead. Kevin Zachary Nealon. You know the truth is, my middle name is James. Oh. So it's Kevin James Nealon. So when the comedian Kevin James kind of oh, showed wow. up on the scene, I thought, Kevin James what? What's his last name? Right. And you know what? That was his last name. Nealon? No, James. Oh. So, so what's his middle name? Nealon? Nealon. You would t- please tell me you were an altar boy. Hang on one second. I got to take a break. We'll be back after this message. And we're back. Oh, where'd you go? I'm here with Harlan Wayne, Harlan Williams. Williams. Wayne's my middle name. That's a beautiful name. Yeah, H-W-W. Do you think anybody has the three W's for their names, like Walter Mm -hmm. Wayne Williams? Yep, yep. Where's Waldo Waldo Washington is his last name. Let me ask you something about you. If you're looking for Waldo. Yeah, do you only look on that paper, that board, or do you go around the house looking for him? I'll usually go down to the red light district because I know Waldo likes to fuck. And Is that true? Yeah, like I'll go down to the red light district and I'll kick a door open and he'll probably be like have a ball gag in his mouth, spread eagle, leather collar, and I'll be like, there's fucking Waldo right there. A lot of people looking for him that he, yeah. that he did wrong to. Getting slammed. Wow. I a want lot you- of husbands are looking for him. Yeah. Are you sitting down? Are you sitting down on your tushy? Hello. Look Look at this. These aren't glasses. This isn't a fax machine. This is tushy.com's bidet. Okay, this thing fastens to your toilet quick and easy and fast. And it's like sitting on a dream. It's like, you ever sit on a cloud? No, you've never sat on a cloud. But if you want to know what it feels like to sit on a cloud, boom. Uh, Tushy, right there. Just an easy, quick, fasten to your toilet seat. And uh, 
Your bum wiping's never going to be the same. Um, the Tushy Bidet cleaned your little calamari ring with a targeted stream of fresh water, eliminating the need for painful wiping because it's so painful. Um, so get going on this thing. You got to order one. Um, you can get one. Uh, you you got to get online. Go to uh, Tushy tushy.com and uh join the three million bots who have already made the switch to tushy and for a limited time our listeners get 10 percent off your entire order when you use the code harland at checkout okay use my name when you go to checkout that's 10 percent off your order at hello tushy.com with the promo code harland and uh this thing cleans you two times better than wiping um it easily attaches to your existing uh, toilet in under 10 minutes without additional plumbing or electricity needed and hello tushy bidet comes with a 30-day hassle-free return and a 12-month warranty so start treating your dairy air folks I mean, you sit on it all day, you, you use it all day, so give it a little love. Give it a little tushy magic. Uh, go to tushy.com and uh, at checkout say Harland, 10% off your order, hello tushy.com with the promo code Harland. And happy movements. I got a book deal and... Uh, it's an interesting book deal. I made I made a, a thing with the publisher where it had to be like this. Um, it had to be that my book had to be always placed on the bookshelf of any bookstore beside Where's Waldo, but it had to be to the right of it. And my book's called Who Gives a Royal Fuck? And so when you go into a bookstore, you'll always see where's Waldo, who gives a royal fuck. <laughs> well, if you're going to last, maybe this isn't. What was that? Good story. It's like a Chuck E. Cheese laugh. You're like one of those. Ro- <laughs> <laughs> um, Here's what I like to do to people. Okay. Say something funny. If you can come up with any. Uh, I saw an old lady trip down the sidewalk the other day. See what I did? You made the old lady have Parkinson's? No, you thought I was laughing. No, I thought you had Parkinson's. Well, that I had that too. Well, you were going like this. I don't know if it's Parkinson's or MS, but I did have, I had the laugh going though too. Oh. Did you see a ghost? I just saw you glance off at nothing. If you buy a house where somebody, would you buy a house where somebody died? Uh, yeah. You would? Yeah. What if they were killed by a ghost? <laughs> I think so. You still buy it? I think so. What if the ghost was asking a ten thousand dollars over the selling price? Then I'd probably kill the ghost. If you, can you kill a ghost? Yeah. How? You are gonna exercise them? Go ahead. So it's go a go fat ahead. ghost. There you go. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm you set me you, up. Man. I'm you, you set me up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to do something with you because I feel like we've gotten pretty close. And this is something I haven't done with any other podcast guests, bleeding or not bleeding. Go ahead. I do a thing, and this is the first time I'm saying this to my audience. I do dream interpretation. Oh, I like that. And I was wondering if you want to do, if you have a dream that you've had recently, you want it interpreted, or do you have a recurring dream? A lot of people have a dream that they have over and over throughout the course of their life. If you wanted to share... I don't normally just do this, but for you, I would do it like a dream interpretation. What is your background with that? Are you training or? Uh, I, t- I studied at DeVry. Oh, the you did? night night classes. Oh, wow. Yeah. The one up on the hill. That's hard to get in, too. Well, I know, but that's why I'm sort of throwing it out here <laughs> How for many you. years did you study uh, dream interpretation? It was 12 night night classes, 12 years. 12? Yeah. Oh, 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. Wow. You got to be good. Well, that's why I'm throwing it out here. Did you sleep a lot during that course? Uh, sometimes we had to as part of our exams. Yeah. yeah. 
Here's your exam. Well, all right, here's my recurring dream. Okay. Because I can't remember one on dreams. Yeah. <coughs> that had a little bit of COVID in it, but not much. Oh. I often have this dream because I fly a lot. I will dream that I am on an airliner and we are flying over a city street, like between the buildings, between the buildings. And we don't crash, but I'm really worried about it. And I'm worried about the pilot. And I'm worried about him getting over that next building. Any, any kind of idea why I have that? Well, first of all, you said airliner, which tells me you're kind of projecting this through a past life. Yeah. I don't think anyone said airliner since the 20s. That's what I'm saying. Interpret it now. So this is an old version of you. Uh, the sky rises represent progress. They represent... Are you yawning? No, no, no. I'm taking it all in. Well, I'm I don't want you in. to have a dream right now. It seems like you're ready to fall asleep. Can you stop crackling? I was thinking, why isn't he saying anything? Because I'm crackling. Yeah, you're really crackling time. a lot. It didn't disturb you at all. Well, it didn't, but my listeners, uh, Donnie Fungus Face don't, don't and even, Carol don't worry about Crunch your, Legs. Your listeners. Well, the only one listening is your assistant in the other room. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Why did you throw the Band-Aid at me? Why? Yeah. Because you were complaining about it. By the way, you since, you're, since okay. you're doing the Parkinson's thing, we'll get back to your dream. <laughs> since you're doing the... I got some great news. Because park, when you get Parkinson's, it's always bad news. But here's the good news. If you've got Parkinson's, I'm not making fun of it. But if you get Parkinson's, you will get to see Bigfoot. Do you believe in Bigfoot? I have two big feet. Size 15. What about you? Oh, I'm 11. So medium foot. All right. You'll get there. You'll wow, get there. Wow, you could probably make more wine than me. Yeah, that's a true fact. And I have. I have my own winery. Wow. If oh, you if you've got, if you got uh, restless leg syndrome oh. and you've got big feet, you're, you're done. You're gold. Do you know I used to have a wandering eye? Here. But luckily, my other eye was a lazy eye, so it was a push. Wow. Hmm. That's true, by the way. I can tell. I'm looking in your eyes. Oh, and There it goes again. Oh, God. And then it went back again. Oh, that's a lazy what? eye. Oh, God. There it goes. When can, they, when can I watch this? Uh, full uh, of tree. Um, we'll, 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 uh, do you have an email? By the way. I never watch stuff I'm on because I've done it and I know what it's like and I don't want to see it from that angle. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I know what I said. I don't want to watch to see how they edited it. Yeah. Edited it. Yeah. And um, you could edit that second, edit it out. I'd like to keep it in if you don't mind. Okay. Because it seems like you have a really long stutter. Like most people just stutter like a, a letter, but you stutter whole words. I edited it, edited it, it. Are you, do you know do you sign need a language? Nap? I do. I saw a yield sign on the way up here, and I knew immediately what it was because it was yellow and it was in a triangle. Let me ask you something. Okay. What am I going to do with you? What am I going to do with you? you don't How's hear, Hawaii? You don't want to hear a serial killer say that to you. Really? What am I going to do to you? Depends on what kind of cereal. What am I going to do with you? Because if it's Rice Krispies, I want to hear some Snap, Crackle, Pop. Right? Was that but your cereal growing up? No, it was Kellogg's. They made it. Kellogg's. Interesting. Yeah, they I made don't have it. Yeah. as a Kellogg's person. Yeah, I loved Fruit the Kellogg's. Loops. I think Fruit Loops is probably the closest thing I can think of. For me? Fruit Loops, totally a Fruit Loop. I'm a Fruit Loop. Can you cut up a Fruit Loop and have it with cheese? Oh, uh, God. You're a cheese guy, right? Yeah, I love cheese. You ever cheese. get a wheel of cheese? I did get a wheel of cheese, but it got a flat, right. and I had, had to, to change, change it. the two. <laughs> <laughs> to Gouda. But let me explain why if you have Parkinson's, you're going to see Bigfoot. Okay. Because if you look on YouTube, Go ahead. every Bigfoot video is, he's always shaking. And so you know the only people that are seeing Bigfoot in the forest are the, are the parkies. I don't know about that. And they're like, hey, Bigfoot. And that's why all the that's foot... Why it's that's shaking. why all the footage of Bigfoot is, it's just the people with Parkinson's. Now, it's a sad disease. I'm not making fun of it. But if you got to have a perk, 
you get the shakes and you get to see a mythical creature. That's not a bad payoff. Kind of no. like your goofy, retarded eyes. <sighs> what? And you say you, you had can't say that. Well, that's what you said. You had tarred eyes. Oh, tired eyes. What did lazy you eye. Okay, I, I can you, see where you can make. I that. heard lazy, then I heard tired, and then I looked at you and I heard I saw tarred. Do you know any but languages? Foreign languages? See, we oui. uh, parlez-vous français? Sprechen die Deutsch? So you don't know uh, any <laughs> African Bushman? What did you just say there? I said, uh, go suck a bowl of gravy down at Kentucky Fried Chicken, get lots of zits, pop them into a little boy's eyes and blind them with your uh, gravy pus. And that's the beauty of the Bushman uh, language because it condenses everything. Four, four pops and that... It, that was five. Well, that's why I can't One of them eat, was a real pop. I can't uh, eat Rice Krispies. Because you pour that milk on there, and it's like... It's talking to you. And it's just like it won't shut the fuck up. And yeah. I can't eat it fast enough to shut it the fuck up. Like, yeah. guys, shut it. And it's just... You, that's why you'll never see an African Bushman uh, eating Rice Krispies, because uh, it's talking to them. What kind of education do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, if well, I have well, to say DeVry I again, DeVry, I will. But- but before that, did you uh, have any kind of a formal education? Or? Oh, I don't know why there's laughing when you say that. <laughs> I, I wasn't you, a smart kid, no. I know, but did I you was, have any formal I education? was homeschooled, and unfortunately we lived in a dollhouse. So I didn't have a lot. <laughs> Are you sucking the table? God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you almost cut yourself again. I saw you're like. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to put a band aid on just so we're in sy- symbiosis. You want me to put it on my mouth? Son of a. Okay. okay. No, no. Put it on your nose. That look kind of good, like a sleep aid. Are you ever use those eight, that sleep uh, that sleep tape that goes over that's supposed to open up your nose? Oh yeah, How's yeah. It, does that work? It, well, here's what happened. I put it in and I breathed in so much. Uh, I did a seven hour fart. Out it, of your it, nose? No, no. It, uh, it opened my nostrils oh, so see. wide that I, 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 during my sleep, so much air was coming in. It was like, oh my God. Oh, I see. And then I'm at uh, church on Sunday. I do a seven hour fart. And someone thought that someone stepped on a bagpipe. That's a long service. <laughs> So you want me to do this? Yeah, but center it. You got to center it. Why isn't it working? It's on now. It's on. It is? Yeah. Okay. Just doesn't right, feel. Just the right of your nose on your eye. Well, it doesn't feel like it's very secure. No, it's good. Yeah. You don't feel it? Excuse me, I'm crackling. <laughs> crackling roses get on board. What's the first concert you ever went to? Um, Believe it or not, the Osmonds. I don't believe it. Yeah, the Osmonds. Really? I saw Donny Osmond and his brothers, the Osmond family, and uh, a Canadian rock band opened for them called Lighthouse. They became very popular, Lighthouse. They did? Yeah. Especially with Sailors. Yeah. Uh, their favorite at band. At night. Yeah. Oh, when it got faggy? No, foggy. I meant foggy. Are you about to nod off? I'm just looking at how glassy your eyes are. Really? Yeah, they're really glassy. What do you mean? Zoom in on it. Zoom in on it when you edit this. <laughs> I mean, it is like, there's like an inch of water on your eyes. Oh, I think you meant glistening. glazed. Glazed. I've That's got glazed eyes. Yeah, glazed. Well, I guess glassy and glazed. Glassy is more of a uh, indication that you're a big drinker and didn't get much sleep last night. But they're not bloodshot, so you're not a drinker. But I slept well, but you're the one that keeps yawning and nodding off. Do you think it's glazed? Because you don't eat donuts, do you? I love donuts. Do you see what I did? I did a Harlan Williams right there. Wait, tell me how it worked. You, what? you take a, a word that's said. Okay. And then you apply it to something very um, absurd and ridiculous. And you go on with that conversation. I'll give you an idea. Okay. Um, um, I heard a pop in my ear the other day. So your dad was at your house? Exactly. Yeah. Who does that? You. I don't think there's any proof that I do that. I'm going to hit the bell the next time you do it. Okay. Okay. 
Um, there was a, uh, for a minute I had a flash about a flood that was going on uh, in Nairobi. And um, I didn't know if I would uh, <clears throat> achieve any kind of uh, safety. Did you say Nairobi? saying um all right let's get into some questions come on oh i crafted it myself oh did you really yeah this me is and one my... thing I, I think i might believe okay well i have a buddy i have a buddy who's a carpenter and uh he comes over from uh, the middle east now and then and we just oh i like that a corrugated uh corrugated right. metal from the uh, mid east comes from he's a carpenter from the middle east okay, and he so comes China over or... no he comes from actually israel Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he just walks across the ocean and, and comes over, and uh, uh, his name's Jesus. Yeah, does great work. I never know when you're kidding. You? Yeah, Jesus. Well, you should. Like I said he walked over the ocean to get here. And we'll go over to Ikea, and this Jesus guy goes berserk. Is this true? This is true because, you know, he, he's a cabinet builder. He does bookshelves. He does coffee tables. You go. You take Jesus into uh, into IKEA. He thinks he's gone to his father's to the heaven to the Holy Land. But this doesn't look like IKEA. This doesn't look like the Lord save your son of the Lord of the Lord of the Holy Host work. No, this looks like uh, mm. a custom job. Yeah, it is. But nothing from IKEA. That's what I'm saying. Jesus did this table, but I take him to IKEA uh, just to show him the 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 the, the stuff. I have, in fact, I lost my Kia's the other day. No way. Do you see what you did? I see what I did right there. I did a Harlan Williams. Oh, I see. Key, you lost your you Kia's. Them? Yeah. I didn't even know you had two cars. I have a Tuca. Oh, my God. You, well, your ears must get cold. They do. That's <sighs> right. No, but not when I have these cans on. <laughs> garbage cans? <laughs> <laughs> These things do not work very well. Like my nose, I don't feel like it's open. It's on there as tight as it could be. I know, but I just, I don't feel anything different. Do you wear any sleep aids at night? I like to, I did get AIDS once at night. I think you did it again. You did it again. <laughs> You're right, I Is did do some it. some kind of a habit? Well, I'm not a nun. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be great on a game show. I would. Yeah. <laughs> Which like one? Monopoly? Word association. Yeah. You know what show you wouldn't be good on? What? Uh, Family Feud. Why? Because you're not smart. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Jeopardy. Yeah, I'm not smart, though. That's the thing. You're not Jeopardy smart is what I'm saying. I know. Like, throw a question at me, and let's see if I can, like, you know, like, be real. Okay, be, right. do, do a tough question, all and right. I'll see if I can what figure is, it out. What is the capital of Nairobi? What is the, um, what is pie equal? For me, blueberry. <laughs> I knew it. What? I knew it. I knew it. All right, let me throw one at you, okay. smart genius. All right. What's the uh, biggest fish in the world? There's a lot of fish in the world. The biggest fish with the kingfish. No. No, what's wrong? <laughs> what is it? What's the biggest whale in the world? That whale. Wow, that's two for two, guy. And you said I was the dumb one. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> two glassy eyes staring at each other. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. You don't know the biggest whale? It's a gray whale. No. Oh. It's a blue whale. Yeah. The red whale. Blue. It's a blue whale, yeah. And biggest uh, fish? Well, the whale's not a fish. It's a mammal. No, the biggest fish. That's what I'm saying. What is it? It's the, the one who's ever the biggest. There's the biggest fish. It's got the word whale in it. Oh, it's a... Uh, uh, go. A killer whale. No? No. It's got the killer in it or whale? Whale. Oh, it's a... Um, it's a whale of a fish. No. What is it? Whale, whale shark. Whale sharks. Yeah. I got it. Oh, by the way, hello, uh, Magic Mind... Yeah, this uh, this drink, this 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 wonderful concoction. Um, you got to try this. It's um, it's this clean energy drink. 
uh, with great ingredients, no excessive amounts of caffeine, uh, no afternoon crashing, no jitters. It just sort of, it, 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 it kind of perks your mind up, makes you more alert, makes you more focused. Um, it can go great with your morning coffee, magic mind in your cafe, your latte. Um, and it, it kind of lasts uh, all day, just kind of keeps you firing on all cylinders. Guys like Joe Rogan are into this stuff. The Kardashians are into magic mind. They're drinking it. And uh, some of the best surfers in the world. I mean, you got to be focused and in the magic mind zone to ride the rip curls, right? Uh, Koa Rothman, Nate Florence. Um, and you can see these guys talking about it on their podcast as well. Magic Mind, boom. And what they've done with Magic Mind is they've kind of, the creators have made the best beverage on the planet um, for everyone involved. Um, this thing goes beyond the industry standards. They promise to use only the world's best suppliers. Uh, they go through rigorous testing of every single ingredient. Um, they provide certificates of an analysis for their ingredients to anyone who requests them, uh, to inspect every bottle of magic mind by hand. Every batch is tested. Uh, they, uh, produce it in a third party lab. And so give this a try magic mind. If you want to just kind of be in that focus zone, the whoosh, that I caught magic mind, but you can also call it whoosh, that's kind of how I do it. And uh, here's to achieving greatness, one shot at a time. And uh, try it. Good old magic mind. Get in the zone. Hang on, my band-aid's getting away. Oh, do you ever feel the world dumping on you? Like, have you ever been in a scenario where, where the world's dumping, where things are just going wrong? This morning. This what morning. happened, guy? <sighs> Life is so hard for me. My Tesla didn't have a lot of charge on it. Yeah. And um, I'm driving back from my house in Bel Air. Okay. And my, my um, cell phone is dying. And I plug it into my uh, console and move all the money out of the way. I just got a lot of money for I won a lottery. And I pushed it in and it wasn't charging the phone. So that's why I asked you if you had a charger when you came here. Oh, right. And also a bag for my money. But you did not have a money bag. Oh, dude. So that is the world dumping on me. And it's yeah. horrible. What about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Way to turn it around, Pop Tate. Remember Pop Tate from the Archie comics? Yeah. He owned the malt shop. <clears throat> he was the best. Those malts looked so good, didn't they? They did. But what do you do when, when shit goes wrong? Like when you're having a bad week or a bad day, what, what, what's, what's Kevin Nealon's remedy to pull himself out of a funk, if you don't mind me throwing that word around? I think this funk. is the first serious question you've asked me. Yeah. It takes me a while to warm up. I told you I'm not well-educated. I'm not good at this. I don't do, I'm not good at communicating. I'm not good at doing a podcast. So it takes me a little foreplay. Are you telling me that Vry is not a good... University for good education? Uh, it's good for some things, for dream analysis, but it wasn't really good for the other things. So what does, uh, if I can uh, steer it back to my first real question, how does Kevin Nealon work his way out of a funk? We've all got, we all get hit with moments of sadness, depression. Uh, we all fall down, guy. How does Kevin Nealon prop himself up and get back on the horse. How That's do I, a real question. How do I prop myself back up? Are you yeah. talking about what I do? When you get down in a funk. Okay. Well, how far down in a funk? Like you're feeling real low. Like uh, Kevin Nealon wakes up, his eyes flitter open in the morning, and he doesn't Good. want to get out Good. of bed. Okay. I don't get out of bed. That's how you deal with it. I deal with it. I keep the lights out. I pull the covers up over me. Wow. I don't get out of bed. Uh, I have a uh, white noise machine. Racist. I knew it. I knew you'd say that. Well, you said I threw, it. I was a softball. I threw up for you. <clears throat> and uh, and then I wait for it to pass. I'll go, let's see, was it 2013? I went for three weeks <clears throat> under the uh, 
without ever getting out of the bed. What? Three weeks. You stayed three weeks in bed. Never got my, never touched the ground, never the floor with my feet. Wow. That's the ultimate Dutch oven. <laughs> Wait, you stayed in bed for three weeks? I'm kidding. Oh, God, kidding. you got me. <clears throat> well, you know, to answer your question, yeah. serious, I think um, having a good support system around you, you know, friends and family that can kind of talk to you, maybe see therapist, right? Really? Have you done that? Oh, no. no. You uh, have? People, no. People have seen therapists, though. But you, not have, you. No, I have. You did? No, I did not see a therapist. But other people have seen, have they gone to therapy? Yeah. And uh, it seems to work for them. It hasn't yeah. worked for me. It's just, so you went and it failed? No, no, no. I never went. Oh. But it didn't work for me. Oh, the concept. You see what I'm I see. No, not the concept. The actual one-on-one. Oh, you went to one. No, I did not go to one. But you conceived of going to one. There was no babies involved at all. But you didn't. So, and then the guy. What I'm saying is that um, that's one of the things that I do to get myself out of a funk. Yeah. Or I'll eat a lot. I love to eat like oh, sugar, wow. you know, salt, cookie. I think the best way to get out of a funk is as much sugar as possible. What does that do for a one Kevin Nealon? I don't know. I've never done it. Oh, but you've conceptualized it. Like you get depressed or you just like you're down and you visualize yourself at a Baskin Robbins just sucking those containers clean like a well, grizzly bear at a garbage dump. First of all, I don't go to Baskin Robbins. You will. And a grizzly does not hang out uh, at the dump. Black bears do. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're supposed to say racist. I put up some football up for you. Because I did it when, when you said white noise. Yeah, but so I wouldn't have been original if I did that. Well, yours was black. Mine was white. That's like, uh, that's, uh, that's what is it, drawing straws? Strong straw? It's like, like, what is that got? A uh, dozen, half dozen, so one to another? Or a baker's dozen? Baker's dozen to one another? So. Six to one, one to six? That's the combination of my chastity belt, by is the way. Is it really? Yeah. Do you, you wear a chastity belt? Yeah. yeah. If you want to get lucky later, you have the combo. You just said it out loud. If you want to peel that sucker open, let the spiders crawl out and have some midnight fun, you just said the right numbers there, lottery lips. What kind of childhood did you have? I didn't. I was born at the age of 14. Are you serious? Yeah. My mother's stretch marks are nine feet long. That's really stretching it. Yeah, her fallopian tubes, history. There was a comic, uh, he's since passed away, so maybe I'll use this joke. Yeah. He said, and he's a very tall comic, he said, I was born November 6th, 7th, and 8th. So Because he was such a long baby. Oh, I thought there was three of them. No. Here's a good joke I heard the other day. You want to hear this one? Was it better than the last one, do you that think? That was not a joke. That didn't sound like it. No, no. That wasn't me. That was uh, someone else. Okay, let's hear a good one. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Thompson goes into the doctor's. <laughs> Hilarious. Let me finish. And the doctor said, I don't have good news for you. Mr. Thompson says, well, tell me, what is it? He said, um, you don't have long to live. You're going to die. And the guy goes, how long, how long do I have, doc? And the doctor goes, five? He said, five what? Four? Three? Two? One? No, there was no one. Because well, he did not win. But if you want to finish the joke, you, no, you got to go. No, I, I finished the joke at four. <laughs> but I heard two. Yeah, but I because you enjoyed it so much, I was giving you more numbers. <laughs> but I would have really had a payoff if you had hit one, because that. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. This joke has no payoff because he's not going to live. Oh, so I'm it. the dumb one. Yeah. Oh, why didn't you just say I'm a dumb one? Luckily, you're not the dead one. <sighs> I like that one. I like a joke that involves numbers. Because as a kid who was born at 14, I didn't get a chance to watch Sesame Street. 
So hearing that joke really filled in a void Do you want me. to hear another joke? With I'd numbers? love to. I bet you would. Please. I wish I knew one. One. That's a good one. Right That's the number. Yeah. I wish I knew one. What do you do for fun? I like to go to the uh, the dog, uh, the thing where the, the dog Rest rescue. Track? No, the rescue. Oh, the rescue, yeah. Yeah, and uh, throw the dogs right. over a cliff and see if they really can rescue themselves. Because I don't believe it. Well, no, 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 they don't rescue themselves. People come in and rescue them. Well, they're called dog rescues. Oh, I see. Okay, you put I, it the other way. Uh-oh. Let me ask you this. Wait, what did I... How do you pronounce that park that's not Disneyland in Los Angeles? Oh, uh... It starts with a K. And it's three letter, three words. Uh, starts with a K with three words? <laughs> Ku Klux Klan Park? No. Well, that's the one I go to. Knots? That's first word. Barry? Knots? Yeah. Good. It's not very good. You talking about Knott's Berry Farm? Yes. Yeah, it's Knott's Berry Good. How do good. you say it? How do you say it? Knott's Berry Farms. No. It's not Knott's Berry Farms. It's Knott's Berry Farm. It oh. belonged to Knott's, the farmer. K N O T T S. Yeah, I thought it belonged to Don Knotts, the actor. No, 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 no. From no, Three's no, Company, no, Mister no. Furley, <laughs> and they, they opened a theme park, Don Knotts Berry Farm. Let me ask them, what am I going to do with you? Well, look, since we're talking about farms, do you remember Pepperidge Farm, the the bakery? I worked there when I was a kid. Okay, well, I've opened a class action lawsuit against them because I used to work at a senior center. And as you know, dementia is a huge thing. It affects the memory. And what was Pepperidge Farms' slogan? Who are you again? See, that's what you would do to me. Uh, the slogan was, uh, bet you can't eat one. No. It oh, was sorry. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Hey, right, it was. And you're putting out pastries, cookies, crackers, crumble cakes, bunt cakes. The oldies love that shit. The seniors love those pastries and squares and cinnamon nubs and things like that. You're putting out all these pastries. They have memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, and you got a slogan that says Pepperidge Farm remembers, and they can't remember fuck all. That's a that's a lawsuit waiting. To, can I? Is this thing working? No, you've been leaving it on too long. You should take it off, because you only breathe in on one side of your nose now. Wait, this goes on the other side? Yeah. Now you tell me. I'm trying to think of another uh, slogan that's popular. Um, oh. Shingles doesn't care. She, oh, yeah. It depends if it's raining or not. If, if it. What, what am I going to do with you? I was what Hawaii am, for a weekend. I, what, were you? No, how's Hawaii for you? asked me what you're going to do with me. I'm up for Hawaii, me and you in Hawaii. No, I didn't mean that. Well, you said, what am I going to do with you? Uh, why? No, I meant, I didn't mean Hawaii. I meant the Caribbean. Sure. Really? I'd love to go to the Caribbean well, with that's you. That's what I'm going to do with you then. Yeah. Let me check the question page. Okay. Oh, have you ever thought about going blonde? Oh, man, I would be horrible. I couldn't see anybody. What do you mean? Is that what you're saying? No, have you ever thought about not blind? Did you say, oh, you said, what did you say, blind? Blonde. Blonde. Yeah. Have you ever thought about going blonde? Where am I going? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you could go, why don't you go to the Caribbean? Oh, the, is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Oh, you got me. I think uh, it's Caribbean. Yeah, a Caribbean, a Caribbean. I think it is Caribbean. Uh, in Spanish, you know what it is? What? Caribbean. Oh, wow. You speak yeah. Spanish? See? Si. Oh, wow. Fluent? Me llamo Kevin. What does that mean? My name is Kevin. Say it again. Me llamo Kevin. Que? Como estas? You said my name is Kevin. Como estas? Diaz? Que ta? Cameron Diaz? No, 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 no. All right, so go ahead. What's the question? Uh, <laughs> have you ever... What's the next question? Oh, the next question. Okay. Um, do you have a tapeworm? You look like you probably do. I have one at home. 
Oh, that's a pet. I wow. keep it in a, a little cage. What? With a little dirt on the bottom. And you know what? Occasionally, if uh, something is ripped and I need to fix it, I will tapeworm it. It's, See, I'm thinking just like a Harlem Williams. No. I don't think. <laughs> you don't think so? I just don't think. And that's an issue. And that's a problem with podcasting. To not be able to formulate thoughts. Well, you're telling me. Man, I'm telling you. No, you're telling me. I'm so excited that you have a pet tapeworm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I have <laughs> one, and I don't know if you want to... Do you feel like sharing? Like, we both have tapeworms. Well, I'm only sharing with the housekeeper. That's how he eats. See? Yeah, I keep him... At, it's not always in the cage. I let him out and for eating time. Yeah. I wrote a little poem in my cinnamon journal about my tapeworm, Timmy. And if, you, if you're up for it, I'd love to share it with you. I would love that. Oh, my God. I'm so excited you're open to this. Uh-huh. What's your tapeworm's name? Leonard. Oh, God. How about yours? Timmy. Timmy? That's a great name for tapeworm. Yeah. This is from my uh-huh. cinnamon journal. Do you have a cinnamon journal? I have other spices. What do you journals. got? Uh, nutmeg. A nutmeg journal? Yeah, I have nutmeg. I have a... Uh, wow. Tacopa. Really? Yep. Yeah. I have um, lessness. Oh, wow. Sage. Oh. Parsley. Rosemary. Rosemary and thyme. Wow. It's always just a matter. I have 12 journals at home. What? Yeah. Journal pig? Well, I don't write in them. What do you do? I just pile them. Put them in a pile. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Why are you rubbing your scapula? Do you know what you call that? Well, the the, the journals. What uh, pile of journals? Is this was that another one of the? What is that you got? <laughs> Did you just pull a welt up your scapula? God. Oh, Parkinson's. <laughs> Let me read you this. Since we both have tapeworms, can I read you this poem that I wrote yeah. from my cinnamon journal? Timmy, Timmy, tapeworm, twirling in a tree. Timmy, Timmy, tapeworm, deep inside of me. Bumble rumps, bumble clumps. Wiggledy, jiggledy. (laughs) Clumpity, clump. Clumpity, clump. Jiggly, jiggle. Timmy, go uptown. Timmy, go downtown. (laughs) Timmy go camping with a horse and a clown. Timmy go barfy. Timmy flink dinkle. Timmy drink Hawaiian punch. Timmy go tinkle. Timmy Tim tapeworm. Timmy Tim crunch. Timmy Tim tapeworm has gone out to lunch. You didn't write that. Wait, I'm not finished. Driving a convertible to Malibu Beach. Timmy dinkle dinkle. Stinky Stink Keech. Who wrote that? I did. No, you didn't. I sure as hell did, guy. Did you really write that? Dude, yeah. You are talented. Did you ever write a a poem for your tapeworm? I have 12 poems that are published. Wait, really? First time seller, yeah. Did you have any um, committed to memory? Oh, they're all committed to memory. Can Can we hear one for the audience? Well, I don't remember them. Oh, they were committed to memory. They were committed. Oh, they were. Yeah. Past tense. <clears throat> Got it. Um, let's fast forward, because I think we're both in the entertainment industry, I right? I going to say, I think we're both done. But oh. no, we're in the entertainment business. Well, I'm looking at the clock. We've just got another hour and a half, and then we're out. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing like a guy that's been locked in an <laughs> asylum. And he just doesn't know what to do, so he's just that silent giggle, like going insane. I love watching you on stage because you just don't care. I you don't. Just, you just go out on a limb, and you just keep moving along. I do. Yeah. You ever seen yourself on a on a video? I don't like you to should. watch them. No, because I was there and I already know the ending. No, no, they change it on videos. Oh, it's never the same. Well. What is that? That's an African yellow belly snapsucker. 
Hang on, I have another serious question. Oh, yeah, you'll like this. What was the most pleasant surprise? Because I think we're both in show business. What was the most pleasant surprise for Kevin Nealon when he entered into the world of show business? What was, what was an aspect of the industry that you you liked that you was was better than you thought or maybe something you didn't see coming? And take your time. Do you need a respirator, guy? I mean, it sounds like you're laying turtle eggs. I mean, dude, let's get you to a hatchery. God, like a leatherback sea turtle wheezing on a beach in Puerto Rico. God, come on. Yeah. Uh, the p- most pleasant surprise that ever happened. To was me. there was there an element yeah, of this industry the where you yeah, you, you, you know you, yeah yeah uh, I think when I got on the Tonight Show for the first time was it yeah it that ex- came out of nowhere with Johnny Carson really because that Tell validated me. you as a as a comic <clears throat> and um, so three nights before three days before I was going to do it they told me I got it wow. I'm doing it and I was so scared. When they introduced me, when Johnny introduced me, I walked out to my spot to do my stand-up. And yeah. I blanked out. I couldn't remember. No. <clears throat> yeah. And after the last clap ended, I remembered it. And I was so nervous. My mouth was so dry. My lip would stick to the upper, you know, like that. Yeah. And I wouldn't do anything. I didn't want to lick it because they'd think I was nervous. <laughs> so I adjusted by bringing this one up. I, like that. So no way. Way. So you had this shit-eating grin on your face the whole time, which probably looked like confidence. It did? So it was sort of a, a, a beneficial accident? Why am I filling in the blanks? <laughs> why, why are you telling your story? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's, the, that's what I'm saying, point. <clears throat> you got it, buddy. Bingo. But so, did it, it's, so you, you, you went through it almost in like a dreamlike state. You went on autopilot, delivered the comedy routine of your life it was the pinnacle moment in your stand-up career because to get on that show was like giving uh, having a court in front of the king and you had no recollection of how it went until you went and watched it later i don't know if you're telling me that because you thought maybe i forgot all that it looked like you did but no that is true that is exactly true i'd never been on such a natural high than after that finished because I got panel too. You did? W- yes. Was that planned or did he love you so he much he called so you up? Much. What? Oh, that's the dream gig. Yeah. People uh, don't realize that being on that show was was literally like like the hugest honor you could have as a comedian. And it validated you as a comic. Yeah. Cuz people were, "Oh, you were on the Tonight show." Oh yeah, you're a headliner with 5 minutes of material. Yeah. Did you do it once or more? I did it with him. Yeah. I don't remember. Maybe two or three times because I did a set that he was not happy about. Oh, wow. Because apparently, he was had a DUI and something happened. Someone got hurt. But oh. I uh, I came out as around the holidays. I said, well, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready for the holidays. I've been doing a lot of drinking and driving. Oh, shit. And he said to the coordinator, he goes, what, what happened? What's that joke in there? What, what's that? He goes, I didn't know he was going to do it. He called me. He goes, I, I, I didn't know you were doing that opening joke. I said, no, it's, been in my, it's always been in that five-minute set. Yeah. So uh, I don't think he ever asked me back after that, but I did it with Joan Rivers. I did it with Letterman and Jay. Wow. Mello, you know, so I did a lot. Isn't it weird when the host takes stuff personal? Like you're not necessarily there to entertain them. You're there to entertain their audience. But when the host takes something personal, I find it very weird. Yeah. I remember I did, I did a... Uh, I don't one of, see you offending anybody, by the way. Well, I think I've done it by accident. Okay. I did that guy Craig Ferguson's late night show once. And I was doing a joke about camping. You know, camping outside. And I said, you know, you go in the tent and everything. I think I st- instead of having a bear rummaging around the camp, I think I replaced it with Rosie O'Donnell. And I did the bit. And Craig Ferguson, you know, the Scottish guy, he just goes, hey, Rosie's a friend of mine. And I just went, yeah, so? And he goes, well, don't be saying that. Like right on the show. 
After your set? No, this was dur- on, during the show. Oh. We, I was doing panel with them. Oh, wait, okay. And I did the whole, like, camping thing. I go, camping. It's like, oh, you're in your tent. Rosie O'Donnell's rummaging around through your food. He's like, hey, hey. Rosie O'Donnell's a friend of mine. My. And I was like, so? And then, <clears throat> yeah, it's just weird that they make it personal. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like him. You know what I mean? That's what somebody The Scottish would say. accent? <clears throat> yeah. Gosh. Oh, is that Scottish? Yeah, Flemish. You just German. had some phlegm, so I made German. it Flemish. Is that German? Well, it is, yes. It's the Scottish region of Germany, a Scottenstein. Yeah, it's in the south near the Black Forest near I get Stuttgart. It. I get it. Um, so this was uh, this exceeded your expectations, the, uh, the whole uh, Tonight Show experience. More than SNL or Weeds or any of these really? things I've done. Um, yeah, that was it. Because that's all I wanted to do was stand-up comedy. Yeah. So that was my focus. And once that <sighs> happened, it's like kind of dating the girl that you've dreamt about for your Yeah. Life. You know what's interesting, <clears throat> Kevin? I did the same thing with Letterman. The first time I did Letterman, it was my target. I When I got into this industry, I was like, I want to do Letterman. After that, everything's just gravy. Yeah. And same thing, I think to this day, I'm still riding on some of the fumes because I had a killer set. Like, I went out, it was my first shot to get on Letterman or Carson. was not an easy task. And I, I did amazing. And same thing, Dave called me over for panel. I wasn't supposed to go over. And same thing, I'm, I still feel that, that energy, that height inside of me to this day. So I can really, for once, we're relating we're almost like this. We're almost laying together in a Walmart sleeping bag on the side of Coconut Cream Pie Mountain or whatever you call it. That was an amazing experience for you. Yeah, Are it you was. scared? I was a little bit nervous, but um, to, to fight my anxiety, to me, comedy is about being silly. Obviously. And so I went, as long as I feel silly, I'm going to do okay. So before I went on stage, this is for real... Before they had a chance to do anything, while I was waiting in the wings, I had snuck a jar of Peter Pan peanut butter in my thing and a knife, and I took it out, and I put peanut butter on the top of my boots. I had black boots on, and I went on stage, and I had peanut butter on my boots. So I walked out feeling silly, and I was in the zoo. That's true. Chunky? Smooth. Yeah, I wanted a smooth set. And uh, so I went out and uh, and and I remember the uh, what was the name of the producer on uh, Letterman the uh, Morty, Morty 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 he was he he was level with the stage like looking up at me, and he was just like okay and then he just kind of uh, and he went like that and he saw that I had the pit and uh, it, and Dave loved it and I got called <laughs> over for panel but I can totally relate to what you're saying yeah and even though we've both done stuff since that I get I get it. That was sort of like the, the mountaintop. That was, because, you know, what you want to do is a stand-up. And once that happens, you know you're on the right track, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it not only validates everything you believed in yourself, but like you said, it sort of sends the message out to everyone else that you, you're, you can do this. Yeah. Now, on the flip side, what's been one of the most disappointing elements of the entertainment industry that you didn't necessarily see coming when you're like, oh, wow, this sucks, or I don't like this side of, wake up, I'm Kevin. thinking. Oh, I thought you nodded off. I'm thinking. Well, thinking doesn't equal snoring. Thinking. Oh, you're deep thinking. Well, I, I, um, I've told this story before. Uh-oh. This will be the last time I'll tell it. Well. When I was 26, 27, I went in for an audition for a show. I had five callbacks. Wow. And the last thing I heard the producers say, we looked at each other and they said, well, we're not getting any closer than this. And the director kind of smiled and everybody smiled. And and I left thinking, I got this gig. I got this gig. Called my manager. I said, I went great. I think they're going to use me. Um, And then two weeks, I don't hear anything. I hear that they're looking for an older actor for the role. And they finally found, they went with uh, Ted Danson for Cheers. Sam Malone. That was you? You were up for that? I was up for that. And they liked me a lot, too, because I was a bartender. Yeah. I was a bartender, and I played football in college. Originally, he was a football, ex-football yeah. player. 
I could yeah. totally see you in you that get role. It? You see that? Well, you have the cadence, you have the demeanor, you you have the uh, chops. You have the chops, and you have a, the dryness. I could totally see you doing that role. In fact, I would have rather have seen you do that role. Oh, wow, bingo! But that's that's sort of a missed opportunity through the casting world. But I guess what I'm talking about is: was there an element? Of the entertainment industry that maybe was a disappointment or a dark side or something that you didn't like that you weren't really savvy to coming into it. And if you need to take another little nap. <laughs> now, I felt that way when I was in the porn industry. Oh. There was a lot of things that I, I hadn't realized. Like what? Well, you had to take your gloves off. <sighs> yeah. So I was out of there. But um, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Is there anything that's... Uh, give me an example of what happened to you. Well, I found that I found that you come to this town and you find out through friends, through business associates, how disposable you can be. That's true. Like, I, I didn't like the element of how you can ingratiate yourself to people. You can have managers and agents, and they're taking you up for dinner, and we're a team, and then all of a sudden one day they just... Yeah, we're not working with you anymore. Like, like, and not just to me, but I've seen it happen to just about everyone. Yeah. And I didn't, I don't like the coldness and the calculated kind of just, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the cruelty of it is there's a cruel side to this business. And so I, I, didn't, is. I didn't really anticipate that. And it's something you have to learn to grow an armor to and, and fight your way through. But so that's an example for me that was. Yeah, I get, I get that. You know, I remember being on a few different shows uh, and you get a gift every year for your birthday. Yeah, from the show? From the show. It's yeah. a nice gift, expensive. And then once you leave the show, there's no more gifts. Yeah. But doesn't that make sense? You're not on the show anymore. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So you think if you leave the show, they should still, like Seinfeld should still no, be getting no, gifts? No, 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 I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying if you leave the show, you should still be getting gifts from them. Even though it's like, Don, you're not on it. No, I didn't say that. Oh. <clears throat> no. Maybe. I'm saying, let's say you finish the show. Yeah. And then they stop giving you gifts. Yeah. That's what I have a problem with. Oh, Okay. So not getting the gift because you're not on the show. But you should I, still I, get it. I don't think you're listening to me. Wait, <clears throat> say it again. When you're not on the show, they okay. stop giving you gifts. Okay. When you're on the show, you get a gift every birthday. Every birthday. That's yeah, a very personal gift. Once a year. Yeah, but once you leave the show, show, there's no gifts. For your birthday. Right. Yeah, that sucks. I get, I'm get. i with you on that one. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is, but... I'm with you all the way on nothing. No, I'm just saying that's 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 coming from my heart. That is uh, the depth of my soul on that one, and that was really painful to figure that out and realize <laughs> and watch it happen in real time. Can I, I recommend something? Yeah, therapy. What kind? Water. Sure. If you want to, how long can you hold your breath? Seven minutes. Yeah, I would do some therapy underwater. Okay. All right. Maybe a whale shark. Um, last serious. This is another serious question. Okay. Is there any outside? Well, you might have answered it with the cheers thing. Yeah. But is there any unrealized portion or element of the entertainment industry that you haven't captured yet? Albeit a script, a movie, as a director, as a writer, as is there something? that you still want to grab that you haven't been able to obtain yet in yeah, this industry. of course. Because you've done a fuck of a lot. I've created a lot of shows and movies, but they never went anywhere. Okay. I wrote a great uh, script with this guy, Danny uh, Zucker, who used to be a producer. On I know family. that name. <clears throat> anyway, we had a great script, and everybody loved it, but then when it came down to it, nobody wanted it. Um, I've written you know, comedies before. I wanted, you know, I wish I had done improv like back in the 1900s, before SNL, so that I had a lot of characters in my back pocket. 
Well, you created a lot of characters on SNL. Yeah, but I didn't come in with a lot like some of those other people. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You know what I think would have been a great character that you might have missed out on? Narcolepsy guy. Like just someone who's always, always nodding off. Yeah. Heavy eyes. Yeah. Like always yawning. That's what I've been trying to do. Leaning on his hand a lot. That type of character would be perfect. You, you should ever, try you should try that. Well, have you ever thought of that? Yeah. And it doesn't work. I don't know. It looks like it's working today. Like for the last hour. No, it doesn't feel like it. Are you auditioning? Were you doing a character this whole time? What do you think? Narcolepsy guy. Yes. Well, suck my <clears throat> dirty Band-Aid. Let me just talk about uh, narcolepsy for one minute. Okay. Um, I uh, was. Uh, I grew up in a kind of a very not conservative family, but I grew up in a, uh, <laughs> you know, a very uh, well balanced family. Yeah. And what were you saying? Here I get on SNL, and I and my parents come. They're sitting in the front row. Were they right tightrope walkers? <clears throat> Well, you did and say I, a very balanced family. I had to play a narcoleptic stripper. No way. Cut off shorts right in front of them and start dancing in front of them. It was really uncomfortable for what? me. What was the first part? I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. What? You're throwing it back at me. You like impressions? Oh. E.T. phone home. <laughs> uh, I think it's time for our final segment, Guy. All right. But Speed before round. we go, can I, I want to I, I wanna mention your beautiful book. I love your book. You gifted me this book last time, and I want everyone to go out and get Kevin's book. That's a great book. And you are an incredible artist. I'm not kidding. Incredible, incredible artist. Caricatures in this book. Anything else you want to say about your, your wonderful yes, book? Yes, I encourage you to get that at a mom and pop bookstore. And if they don't have it, then go to Amazon and get it overnight. Um, yeah, it's, it's got anecdotes next to each painting. A lot of them my celebrity friends. Yeah. And, um, and there's uh, interesting stories that I relate to them. Yeah, it's incredible. You are you, you are sir. such a talented guy, yeah. and uh, I love uh, picking your brain. I love watching you sleep. I love uh, everything about you. <laughs> I love the way you bleed. <laughs> Only I, women bleed. I used, to pair, I used to have a pair of these. You did? I got them when I was a kid in Holland. No way. Yeah. What size? Uh, seven. Oh, great. And the other one was a 12. Were you a sprinter? I was a... Uh, yeah, I was a sprinter, but slow motion. Yeah. I loved pretending like to go running fast. Yeah, you can't go too fast with these. I did that for football, too, as a kid. And then when I went to try out for a football team, yeah. everybody was a lot faster than me. Yeah. Like that. <clears throat> yeah, what? You yeah, but at least is? when it rained, you would float. So this is a words from a wooden shoe. You remember this. You reach in, pull out a word, and see if it okay. uh, triggers a story from your journey in life that All you right. can share with us as a kind of a closer here. This is crazy that I pulled this one out. What is this it? This is kismet. This is ducky. Ducky. Okay. Oh. Did you know that I... <laughs> I, did. Yeah. I don't look in the shoe. This is all... Ducky was the name of a pet I had. It was um, cute. It was a it was a dog. Okay. But we thought it'd be cute to name him Ducky. Yeah. And he actually became friends with a flock of ducks. Is it a flock? Yeah. Or a gaggle? No, a gaggle of geese. A flock yeah, of ducks. A flock of ducks. And he became the ringleader. And it's funny because so it was a circus we, of ducks. We named him Ducky before this. Before he met up with the the. the uh, Right. Flock of, of ducks. Yeah. And <clears throat> ultimately, he turned on ducks and he ate the whole flock. <sighs> wow. There you go. Thanks for bringing up a bad memory. Well, I used to have a dog who liked to watch porno movies. His name was Fucky. And uh, he, but this is, this isn't, I, this That's is. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Uh, Kev, before we go, can you tell the folks. If you can just wake up long enough to tell the folks where you're going to be. I'm going to be, uh, uh, you have a comedy tour out there. An, yeah, I where? I exaggerate tour. Uh, they can go on my website, kevinneelan.com, and find my little tour of my, my schedule. Great. And uh, also I have a hiking show on YouTube, 
On YouTube, Hiking with Kevin. Okay. Hike with a different celebrity. On YouTube? And, uh, and, uh, and you'll see me around town. BT phone home. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Kevin Nealon. Once again, his 15th visit to the Harlan Highway. Was it 15 or second? 50, I said. 50. Uh, has the bleeding stopped? It's coagulated. That's what she said. Maybe go out on that. Uh, <laughs> folks, uh, thanks for being here. Harland Highway, Kevin Nealon. Get his fabulous book. Check out his fabulous comedy tour. And until next time, chicken chow mein, baby. You didn't mean it that I was a dumb guy, right? The opposite. What's that? What would be the opposite of dumb? What? Stupid. <laughs>